Well, good morning. Uh, it's uh, Sunday morning here in uh, Seattle. Uh, the uh, autumn time is upon us. The weather is starting to turn cooler and rainier. So uh, we're back in for the wet season here. Anyway, what we have here is the 9122D. These are the double-sided drives. And if you look, where's my little pointy stick? Um, I don't know where my little pointy stick has gone. Uh, if you look, up oh, there it is. If you look at uh, the tops of the drives here, you can actually see the upper head. This is going to be much easier uh, to see the disc moving um, than uh, uh, previously. Okay, so now if we go over to my uh, Dolch Pack, and uh, what I've already done is I've run these and I've sprayed the crap out of them with uh, uh, IPA, and so uh, they should be uh, pretty much good to go. I have uh, some drive, I have some uh, double-sided discs in here, and you can see when they come in, the, the heads will come down. So let's try and initialize the first unit. Oh, of course I have to turn the unit on, that makes all the difference. And now you can see the uh, self-test light, and the drives are going to uh, test, and you can see the light coming on. And if the light stays on after the test, then uh, that's supposed to, I believe, tell me that there's uh, something wrong with the drive. So as far as the control circuitry goes, the drives believe they're OK. So now let's go over here, and we will try and initialize drive 0. And now if we look, you should be able to see the head uh, start moving, and it's failed. So now we're going to have a look at uh, the other drive. You see the head does a scan. But it too has uh, failed to initialize. So given that the parts seem to be moving well, I think the issue is probably going to be uh, with dirty heads or some oxidization on heads. Now this came up uh, in uh, the part two video where we looked at uh, the single-sided uh, drives. Uh, in the comments, people mentioned uh, you know, cleaning the heads and how they used to run uh, uh, cleaning uh, tapes through cassettes and uh, even they uh, mentioned a uh, clean diskette, and as soon as they mentioned that, I was like, oh yeah, I remember those, the, the cleaning diskettes I used to get. So I went out to a place, floppydisks.com, and uh, I bought myself a, a little three and a half inch uh, cleaning disk. Now, this has, uh, in here you'll see that it has uh, a uh, matte fiber based uh, disk that you put some IPA on. So we're going to go do that, and then we're going to see how uh, we'll run it through, see whether or not uh, it actually makes a difference. The uh, drink of choice today is the classic Australian Bundaberg rum uh, ginger beer. Uh, this is from Bundaberg region in Queensland. Uh, it's fantastic. It's the best ginger beer in the world as far as I'm uh, concerned. Okay, so let's pop a disc out of this drive. Let's go and get some of the... IPA and let it sink in for a bit. Let's see if we can turn the, the disc around a little and we'll get a bit more IPA on that. Let's just turn it a little bit more. And a bit more IPA. Okay, so now let's just carefully drop this disc in. Now if we look, uh, you might not be able to, to see it. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in a bit. You know, you'll see the head here and the disc. So let's carefully just drop this in and make sure that the heads don't hit anything. And now we saw that the disc spun, so Let's just try and initialize again. Mm. 
Okay, and now we've got an error saying that there's no medium in the drive, which is sort of what I would expect. But now the drive's powered up, so we should be able to just pop that disc out carefully. It's sort of all a bit dodgy. And we'll put our disc in. And we'll try initialize again. We can see the head moving now. It's much further than we got the last time. Oh, read data error. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's just see if we can uh, run it again. Now I noticed at the end of the run, the head sort of ran into uh, the edge and lifted up a little bit. So let's try the other drive. And let's try that initialize command again. Well, I guess really doesn't like these either the there is something deeper wrong with the drive or maybe the discs didn't uh, uh, didn't like the disc. Let's make sure if I got the right disc, yeah, this should be the double sided. Let's try that again. Okay, so it seemed that this disc, what I was noticing was that as that came close to here, it sort of bumped up on the edge of that disc. So let's see if uh, the swap in the disc around, maybe it was just sensitive to that disc. Okay, so now let's copy uh, slash BLP slash examples slash symbol. Was it symbols or symbols? I think it was symbol, colon, uh, dos, comma, c, to symbol, colon, comma, 700, comma, zero. 
and then cat. Okay, so it must maybe it was just a bit sensitive. You, get, you know, these are I bought an enormous like box of these or bag of these uh, 720k double sided double density um, new discs, and you can see that if we turn that around, you can see the thing. Now they're uh, that's the company I bought it from. So these are all new; they're manufactured new, uh, but maybe they're a little bit out of tolerance. These things might be really uh, sensitive to it. So let's uh, pop this guy out, drop him in here, and let's set our mass storage to one, and you'll see the light come on. And so if we do a cat, so it's reading the disk. Uh, let's do a cat of uh, slash BLP slash examples, colon DOS, comma C. And let's grab uh, a longer one. Let's grab, um, uh, we don't want readme because it's a DOS file. Let's grab a new model because it uh, seems quite a, a long one. So it's copy slash BLP slash examples slash uh, new model colon DOS comma DOS comma C to new model. Now, because I have the mass storage device, which is what I did with the MSI, I don't need to tell it where to go. It'll just put it to the default mass storage drive. And if we do a cat, okay, so it seems that the drive's reading. Let's try initialize uh, the disk again. Oop. I guess I have. I guess you have to give it the Okay. Well, it seems that the drive's sort of working. So uh, I might take them out and give them uh, uh, another bit of cleaning. And then we'll see if we can uh, see if that uh, helps them at all. Be right back. Okay. Well, I've done... Uh, another round of cleaning on this device and I don't think the uh, uh, I don't think the issue is with the I don't think the issue is cleaning uh, when we turn this on it you might not be able to hear it but the two drives will do a seek and listen to the difference in the sound of the stepper motors So I'm starting to think that um, uh, what the issue is, is that because this has been gunked up uh, and everything, that it's had a hard time moving the heads and there's some wear and tear on the uh, stepper motor for the heads to move back and forwards. So I'm going to have to go and investigate. I have some other drives. Let me grab one of those. Uh, I have these other drives, which... Uh, from a different uh, 9122D, and if you remember, you know, they showed that the heads were ripped off the, the top here. So I'm going to have to go and investigate to see if what I can do is extract uh, the stepper motor parts that will be down in here and this uh, motor, and then replace that uh, stepper motor in there, and maybe that's uh, what's going on and should bring the, the drive back to life. So... 
this won't be the, the last part uh, of the, uh, uh, the drive repair. Uh, hopefully what I'll find is that it's just a simple uh, swap from here straight into the, here and that um, the actual carriage part that connects to the, the stepper motor in there, the little carriage that, you know, if you look in, you might be able to see the, the stepper motor uh, in there. I'm not sort of trying to get that, but uh, that part might just be able to be replaced and reattached to the, the heads of the, the motor. So with that, if you uh, found this interesting, give it a thumbs up. Let me get the thumbs up in the, in the shot. Uh, and uh, uh, check me out in the comments. Catch you later.